Okay, so welcome back. I know we're on forces at rest. And we're going to start with moments and levers. Let's get started. So, a lever is any device or machine which is very simple and it makes work easier. And we see levers every day, we use them every day. A wrench, a wrench, if you describe it like that, um, a bottle opener. Mm, what else? What else is a lever? Even a stick could be a lever. A stick can be a lever when you want to lift up something heavy, right? Um, when a force is applied, which we're going to call the effort, um, levers turn about a pivot. And the pivot is also referred to as the fulcrum when doing work to move the resisting force, which would be the load. So in this case, the effort would be from our hand. The pivot would be where the um, lever comes in contact with the object. And the load would be the cap, right? So the pivot would be where the um, bottle opener comes into contact with the bottle because it's going to pivot on that to lift the cap. In this case, the force or the effort applied would be from your hand here as well. I could be from your foot depending on whatever you use to apply that force. Um, the pivot is where the, is what, basically the pivot is where anything turns on. Is any surface that something turns on in this case the pivot is where the um, in this area here the nut when the nut swivels around this it's gonna turn and then the load that we're taking off is the nut okay and so this is referred to as the turning effect okay whenever you apply a, um, a force known as the effort and you cause something to turn about a pivot and you remove like a load or lift the load or anything it's called the turning effect some examples of levers are scissors bottle openers crowbars, pliers, seesaws, tweezers wheelbarrows, spanners and hammers and a hammer remo removing a nail right so you have seen levers everywhere. You are in contact with levers. You've been using levers all the time, right? Um, there are three types of classes of levers. You have first class, second class, and third class. And we're going to explain that on the flip side. A first class lever is a machine where the fulcrum or the pivot is nearer to the load than the effort. An example of that would be the crowbar lifting a load. Second class levers are machines where the load and the effort are sheared out by the fulcrum so the force needed to lift the object is less than the load force so we have wheelbarrows which has second class levers right and these act as force multipliers third class levers are machines where the fulcrum is nearer the effort than the load and an example of this would be tweezers right third, cla third class levers are often used to remove very delicate or small objects. And here we have an example of what I would have explained a while ago. And we have now in this case instead of the instead of this what we what they said before the crowbar, they now have a pliers. We have the output force, the fulcrum and the input force. And then they have for second class again a wheelbarrow. And then for third class, you have a bicep lifting um, another force or weight. So those are all examples. Usually on a test, we would ask you for two examples of um, levers, of the classes of levers, or maybe even two examples of a certain class of lever. So the turning effect of a force. When a force acts on an object, it may cause a turning effect. I always try to exhibit this when dealing with um, trees. So you know when a um, waiter or waitress comes to you, they would always put their hand in the center because the turning effect is much less than if they hold the tray over here. What would happen if they hold the tray over here? Correct. Uh -oh correct it would fall right 
So the turning effect is less. So let's just imagine that we're in the center here and the turning effect is not because it's going to balance out on each side. However, if you move the fulcrum, I'm going to call my hand the, the fulcrum or the pivot, the point at which things turn upon, right? If I move my hand, which is acting as the fulcrum at this point, the book will no longer be able to support its own weight because it's not balanced and then it will easily flip over. So that's why um, waitresses or waiters hold their plates or um, their, what do you call that again? Not plates, but they're on the trays. They hold the trays like this because they want to balance. They want to balance out the stuff on their hand. So when a force acts on an object, it may cause a turning effect known as the moment of force. The turning effect depends on the size of the force applied and the distance of the force from the pivot, like I showed you in that example just now. The equation for this, for turning moment, would be force times distance, and the unit for the turning moment is newton meters, whereas the unit for force would be newtons, and the unit for distance would be in meters. The unit of moment of a force is a newton meter, like I said, and it is not equivalent to a joule because the distance measured is perpendicular to the force and not in the direction of the force, right? By perpendicular, we have it like this, so a force may be acting up or downwards towards the plateau here, right? It's not in the direction of the force, it's causing something to turn. So why is the handle on a door at the outside edge? Why doesn't it make sense to put the door handle in the center of the door? Correct, because the handle on the outside of the door causes the door to open easier than if you put it in the center. Right? So here we have a scenario. Let me hook up my, um, my board. Now let's work this out. So remember we're gonna be using the we're gonna be using the um equation. So let's get started. Remember the equation would be the equation would be um force times distance. So we know that moment is equal to force times distance. So if we work this out, it says what is the moment of force on the gate in scenario A? Right. First of all, we have established that this is the fulcrum right here. So we can just draw a triangle. Usually in the drawings, you would draw a triangle to represent the fulcrum or the pivot. And the force is three meters away from that um, pivot. As you can see here, it says the, the turning effect depends on the size of the force applied and the distance of the force from the pivot or point of rotation. So the distance here is, for, so we're going to do scenario A. They say A equals to, so the distance is three meters and we have it in the correct unit. And the force being applied is 5 newtons. So that will give us 15 newton meters. For scenario B, so we're imagining this is a door. So here will be the door knob. And we're saying we're going to look at the door being open that way. So it's going that way. And in this case, the door knob is now in the center. And the door is being pushed the same direction. However, the door knob is halfway in between the door and we want to see what the, tor the turning force would be like. So we know this is the fulcrum right here. And the force applied is 1.5 meters away from the fulcrum. So it would say the same force is being applied, which is 5 newtons. However, the distance is now half of what it was before. So therefore, it should be approximately... 7.5 newton meters yes so which 
Okay, so we were asking, we're going back again. My camera died, my battery died, so coming back again. Which force, which turning moment is greater? Yes, A is greater. So that is why the doorknob is on the outside and not on the inside, on the middle side, because the turning force is greater. Now let's try these. It says a uniform plank of 10 meters long is balanced on a pivot 2 meters from one end by a planar force of 30 newtons at the end. What is the weight of the plank? Alright, so the length of the plank is 10. So therefore the weight would act at the center, which would be 5. So let's say this is about 5 in between here. five meters so this is a mistake so it's five meters and so we know from here to here would be five meters so let me get rid of that maybe it's this right here so from here to here will be five meters and then the weight will be acting downwards right so this is 5 meters, 5 from 8 will leave 3 meters towards the pivot, right? So if, so we want to know what the weight is. When you're doing this, this is, I never taught you this, so basically to, for things to balance, what is, what is on one side must be equal to what is on the next side, right? So remember we know, we know that turn in moment, turn in moment is equal to force times distance, okay? So the turn in moment on this side, let's say this is side, the turn in moment on this side here. We're going to call this side A. Is uh, um, 30 newtons times 20 meters times 2 meters and that will give us 60 newton meters right so if this is balanced if this whole thing is balanced it said it's balanced right here we want to know what must be the force because the weight is equal to force right what must be the force what must balance how can we get 3 meters let me put a dash right here Let's go back. So we want to so this is side A. I know we want to look at side B. So we're looking at this scenario right here. Side B. So, hmm, the distance of the weight from the fulcrum is 3 meters. So therefore, we want to know what times 3 meters will give us 60 newton meters for it to be balanced. So we have 3 meters here. What times 3 gives you 60? Right, so all you would have had to do is divide both sides by 3 meters. Or you could have seen it. Some of you could see it. Eh? <coughs> 2 times will give you 6. I mean, 3 times will give you 6. 2. So you will put a 2 right here and put the 0 back. So you know it will be 20 newtons, right? Same thing if you divide and divide and you divide this and you divide that, you get 2 and you bring back up to 0, so 20 newtons. So the weight would be 20 newtons. Okay, so even though you didn't learn how to do um, one side against the next, you know that for things to be balanced, side A must be equal to side B. Now it says here in the figures below, the distance AC is equal to CB. Calculate in each case the force P, which will keep the system stationary. Okay? So, all upward forces. Is equal to all downward forces. Okay, so knowing that, 
if the forces here, the sum, I'm going to say the sum of, is equal to the sum of, sorry. sum of all the other forces. So all the forces going upwards. If all the forces going downwards, the sum of that will be ten newtons plus ten newtons will be equal to twenty newtons. So for it to be balanced, whatever is equal down here will be equal to the sum of the forces up here. So this up here will be twenty newtons, correct? Now remember it says <coughs> The distance between AC and BC are the same. RCB is the same. So for, to make things easy, I will say 1 meter and 1 meter. So I want to find out, um, calculate in each case force P, which will keep the system stationary. So I'm going to do this as side A. Because this force to this it will be 1 meter. So this is side A, and then from here to here is the next one, because remember, this force is going up. And also, we're going to look at this as going this way. This is going down, and if you look at it this way, you know, on a clock, when you're going in this direction, it's clockwise, right? And if you're going up now, this will be going this way. And how we do that? Just imagine you have the pivot just put imagine this pen is on the pivot right there and it's going up so you just put this on the pivot and you move it the direction of the arrow and you will see that it's going anti-clockwise this is from a to b okay and this from this one will be from a to c a to c putting this on a this n on a and carrying it down will be clockwise so this way going this way would be anti-clockwise right <coughs> so A to B is anti-clockwise sorry if I made a mistake earlier and A to C is clockwise and we said sum of all forces sum of all forces clockwise equal to the sum of all anti-clockwise forces <coughs> okay so a to c we're going to multiply 10 newtons times one meter and then from a to b the distance from a to b is right two meters so we're going to set two meters right here and then we're going to have x are we looking for that mass that I'm um, sorry that weight and we're going to divide now both sides by 2 meters so that we could get X and from there we will get 2 into 10 gives us 5 newtons so the answer for P we know P is equal to 5 newtons okay Now it says calculating moments clockwise and anti-clockwise. When describing the actions of moments, the terms clockwise and anti-clockwise are used to describe the direction of action. Now here we have F1. F1 is trying to turn the ruler anti-clockwise. So remember, if you have the clock here going this way, it will be um, anti-clockwise. And going the other way would be clockwise. Just know when the forces are going down on the left hand side of the pivot, they're gonna go anti clockwise. When they're going down on the right hand side of the pivot, they're gonna go clockwise. And it's opposite for when they're going up on the right side of the pivot, they're gonna go anti clockwise. And on the left side, they're gonna go clockwise. Okay. So when a ruler is balanced or at equilibrium, the results should show that the anti-clockwise moment 
force times distance equals to the clockwise moment force times distance. When an object is in equilibrium, it is not accelerating or rotating. The two equilibrium conditions are there is no resultant force acting on the object and the clockwise moment is equal to the anti-clockwise moment. And this is known as the principle of moments. And we have a world example here. The C solubility balance is when Joanna of weight 320 newtons is at A. Tom of weight 540 newtons is at B. And Michael of weight um, W is at C. So first of all, we have to do the sum. So every so we're going to, this is half. This is where we split it down the center. So these are on the left hand side and both weights, uh, both forces are going to go anti-clockwise. While this one would go clockwise. Okay, so all of them going down. All the forces going downwards, right? Now we see here that 540 is 1 meter away from the pivot, whereas 320 is 3 meters away from the pivot. So that would be 2 plus 1 give you 3, as you see here. So 320 times 3 plus 540 times 1, and that gives us 1500. Now we want to find out what the weight is, so we just multiply the force by the distance away from the pivot and that will give us w times 3 right so now we're going to have we can have 1500 newton meters equal to 3 w newton meters we divide each side by 3 because remember we're looking for w they cancel out and then we say 3 into 15 will go 5 times and put the zeros so we know now that 500 newton meters will be equal to W. That's. Oh, I didn't put the meters now. My bad. So 3 meters divided by 3 meters. So you end up with 500 newtons. <coughs> Correct. Right? So this is 500 newtons. Good? Well, consider two decorators of weights, 500 newtons and 700 newtons standing at A and B on a plank resting on two trestles. So these are our pivots, right? This and this. And it says the whole weight of the plank, 400 newtons, may be taken to act vertically downwards at its center. So we are here. And the center is seen as O. So now we all we are all aware that our upward forces, so that's P and Q, will be equal to our downward forces. So P plus Q will be equal to 500 plus 400 plus 700, making 1600 newtons, right? So the moments can be taken about any point, but taking them about C, Taking our point C eliminates the moment due to Q. So here we have um, C, and we're not going to look at Q right at this moment. That's going to be ignored. So if you have your um, your your pivot, and we're looking at B from this, B will be going anti-clockwise. O will be going anti-clockwise and A will be going anti-clockwise, right? However, P from C will be going where? If you're moving it, if you have to move it up, it's going to be going clockwise, right? So A, O, and B will be anti-clockwise. And always remember, you try to put the the end of whatever ruler or pencil you're using on the pivot itself. So in this case, our pivot that we're looking at ignoring Q will be C. So we're taking, we're taking, the moment can be taken about any point, but taking them about C eliminates the moment due to Q. So we're not looking at Q right now. We're just going to look at C as a pivot, right? 
and so if we put this here on C and we look at B, O and A, they're all going down, they're going down the same direction, which is anti-clockwise. However, if we go from C to P and move it upwards in that direction, it would eventually go clockwise, right? So remember the clock. We have a clock. Clockwise is this direction, so this will be going this direction, that's clockwise. And the anti-clockwise will be going in this direction. So clockwise and anti-clockwise. So this will be going this way. Sorry. This will be going this way this way and this way and that will be going the opposite direction like that. right so now we would say we're working out the clockwise moment the clockwise moment would be p times four meters probably adding up one two three four so the p is four meters away from c how many meters away is 700 newtons from c one and they're two meters away from 400 so one two and then how many meters to the 500 one two three four five right and so once we work it out we say 700 plus 800 plus 2500 will give us 4000 once we have that we can say 4 p m equal to 4000 we put them to equals remember our clockwise moments to be equal to our anti-clockwise moments. So clockwise and it's the anti-clockwise. So once you have this you can work it out. So 4 P M equal to 4000 N N so the variable 4 meters over 4 meters so that will be equal to P equal to 1000 1000 newtons and we have 1000 newtons right there and now we have P we could find out what Q is so since we know that P plus Q is equal to 1600 newtons and we, are, we now know that P is a thousand newtons, then Q must be 600. So we're going to minus 1000, and we're going to minus 1000. And we said Q is equal to 600 newtons. Just take it says there. Trust me, I don't think you're going to get such a hard problem ever. Okay, well, what you could do is now try to work it backwards. In other words, you have you could start off with p plus q is equal to um, all of this 1600. But can we take it about we could name this um, z? We could take this about z, and we're gonna probably get the same thing. So if we ignore p and we put back into perspective q, are we going to get the same thing? we should. So what I'm going to do is we're not going to take this. So now we are going to use this as a pivot, right? And let's try it the other way. Try it the other way. Alright, so we're going to try to be quick about it because I think the time soon stop. Okay, let's try it now. Ready? So if we go about this, um, 
pivot, we could send out that. If we're going this way, if we're going this way from the pivot, this way, this will be clockwise. This will be clockwise. Um, this would be, so it's a clockwise, clockwise. This would be anti-clockwise. And this would be this one. would be um, anti-clockwise, right? So we have clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise. So if we, we could put clockwise moments, so we know from Z we have 400 times 2, 400 newtons times 2, plus 700 newtons times 3 meters and anti-clockwise now we're going to have 500 times 1 500 newtons times 1 meter plus Q times how far is it? 4 meters so we add 2 plus 1, 3, 4 4 meters and we end up with 800 newton meters plus 2100 newton meters equal to 500 newton meters plus Q 4 meters, right? So we're gonna say this is 2900 newton meters minus 500 newton meters equal to four meters cube, right? And that will give us twenty four hundred newton meters. And we're gonna divide both sides by four and that should give us point to twenty four six yeah six hundred newtons and we got it. So Q so we proved it. So it basically, Q is definitely 600 newtons, right? If this is too much for you, don't worry. We'll do more questions later on. Bye. See you around for center of gravity.